And we are live. Welcome to Olivia's Stories, ladies and gentlemen. Sometimes in life, we are faced with choices to do things that we might enjoy shortly, but will eventually ruin us in the long run. I know this now because just for a few hours of fun that I had at a bachelorette's party, I've ruined my marriage. I honestly don't know how to move on. My husband is very angry and I don't know how to pacify him. My name is Hillary and I am a 28-year-old woman. My husband, Philip, is a 27-year-old man and we've been married for three years. We live in the United States and we don't have any kids yet, as we just started trying to have some. I spotted Philip's profile on Tinder and we hit it off chatting. We talked for a few weeks, vibing on shared interests and laughs. Eventually, we figured, why not meet face to face? So we set up a date and I remember. Walking into the restaurant, I hadn't dated in a while, so I was very nervous. I spotted Philip at a corner table. He flashed a friendly smile that instantly put me at ease. We said hi, laughed about the menu's quirky choices and used that to break the ice. The place had this cozy vibe that made our conversations flow naturally, from childhood memories to favorite movies and the whole online dating scene. As the night rolled on, I got to know Philip better. His easygoing charm, genuine kindness, and a sense of humor that just clicked with mine. We dug into the appetizers, and with each exchanged glance, there was this unspoken connection growing between us. When it was time to say goodbye, there was this subtle shift in the air, and I knew that I was definitely seeing this man again, lol. For our second date, Philip and I decided to ditch the usual dinner and a movie routine and opted for something a bit more offbeat and art gallery adventure. Now, I'm not exactly an art connoisseur, but the idea of exploring vibrant canvases and quirky sculptures together sounded like a fun way to break the ice that was still between us. As we strolled through the exhibits, the artwork became a backdrop for conversations that were deeper than your average small talk. It was like the paintings were giving us an excuse to peel back layers and get to know each other on a whole new level. Philip's insights into art and life, in general, intrigued me. It wasn't just about the colors and shapes on the walls. It was about sharing perspectives, aspirations, and the little quirks that make us who we are. The art gallery with its hushed tones and thoughtful gazes, we found ourselves discussing everything from childhood dreams to the weird and wonderful things that make us tick. It was surprising how a collection of art pieces could act as a catalyst for us to open up in ways that hadn't happened on our first date. After absorbing all the creativity, we decided to keep the night alive with a spontaneous visit to a nearby food truck. No fancy dinners, just some street food goodness. The change in atmosphere from the refined elegance of the gallery to the laid back charm of the food truck created a cool contrast. We sat on a bench sharing bites of our unconventional meal choices and the laughter flowed just as freely as it did among the gallery's hallowed halls. What struck me about that night was the ease with which we transitioned from one setting to another. It wasn't about impressing each other with our knowledge of art or fine dining etiquette. It was about enjoying the experience together, finding joy in the simple act of trying something new. I realized that Philip and I could find common ground, not just in our tastes, but in our ability to appreciate the beauty in unconventional places. After dating for a while, we decided to take the next step and move in together. In our new place, Philip and I dove headfirst into the nitty-gritty of living together. Mornings were a hilarious bathroom scheduling challenge, and the kitchen was like a fusion of our cooking styles and tastes. Amid our laughter and occasional spats, getting the hang of shared responsibilities was a joint effort. We tackled chores together and hashed out decisions about furniture and decor. It wasn't all smooth sailing, we had our fair share of arguments, but each disagreement became a chance for us to understand and grow both as individuals and partners. I remember our cozy private moments. Lazy Sunday mornings with breakfast in bed and quiet nights on the couch brought us even closer, finding solace in the simple joy of being together. The day Philip popped, the question caught me off guard, but turned out to be a moment I'll never forget. We were at this quiet beach we both loved, where we'd shared a bunch of good times together. The day kicked off with a feeling that something special was in the air, lol. As we walked along the shore, the waves provided a chill soundtrack, and I couldn't help but notice Philip acting a bit jittery but excited. As the sun started to set, we ended up at this spot with candles and blankets. Kind of romantic, right? 
Philip started pouring his heart out, talking about all the good stuff we've been through. His words were a mix of vulnerability and honesty, painting this picture of us facing life's adventures side by side. Then, with a glint in his eye, Philip got down on one knee, pulled out a little box, and opened it to reveal a shiny ring. The world seemed to freeze as he popped the big question, and I felt a whole bunch of emotions, happiness, excitement, and the realization that this was a big, beautiful beginning. The proposal was simple but special, just like us. It wasn't about some fancy setup. It was about Philip choosing me for the long haul. With happy tears in my eyes, I said yes. Philip and I hugged, sealing the deal on a future together. In the moments that followed, we sat watching the stars come out. I remember meeting Philip's parents for the first time ever. It felt like a big deal, a mix of excitement and nervousness that had me wondering how it would all go down. We decided to hang out at Philip's family home, a comfy spot filled with memories and that homely smell you get from good cooking. Walking up to the front door, I was a bit jittery. Despite Philip saying his parents were chill, I couldn't help those butterflies in my stomach. But as soon as the door opened, his mom and dad gave me these warm hugs that made me feel right at home. The house was decked out with family photos, and the smell of some seriously good home-cooked food filled the air. Philip's parents were awesome hosts, making the whole vibe easygoing and perfect for chatting. We gathered around the dining table, loaded with homemade goodies and swapped stories about where we came from, what we liked, and all the stuff we'd been through with Philip. And listening to Philip's parents share stories about his childhood added this cool layer of understanding. I got to see the family dynamic, catching onto their inside jokes and seeing the love they had for each other. It was clear that family was a big deal for Philip, and getting the invite into that world felt pretty special. As the night rolled on, I found common ground with Philip's parents. We shared values and had this mutual respect for the awesome person we all cared about. Any initial worries I had about making a good impression faded away as we dove into genuine talks about life, love, and what the future might hold. When it was time to leave, saying goodbye, I couldn't help feeling grateful for how welcoming Philip's parents had been. It wasn't just about meeting them, it was like a glimpse into the background of where Philip came from and feeling more connected to the roots that made him who he is. Planning our wedding was a wild ride, filled with excitement, dreams, and a fair bit of stress. From imagining the big day to dealing with unexpected hiccups, it puts our love and patience to the test. In the early days, we were pumped about our dream wedding. Late night talks revolved around themes, venues, and who'd make it to the guest list. Friends and family backing us up gave us a boost, making those initial stages feel like a breeze. But when the planning wheels started turning, so did the stress. Picking a venue turned into a puzzle, where our ideas clashed and family expectations added another layer. Finding a compromise that worked for both sides became a real skill. Money matters kicked in too. Our dream celebration bumped against the reality of wedding costs. Talks about priorities, how many guests to invite, and finding the sweet spot between grand and simple became a daily thing. Sorting out the guest list, which sounded fun at first, got tricky. Balancing the desire for a big celebration with keeping it intimate meant making tough calls that sometimes tugged at the heartstrings. Unexpected issues popped up, from problems with vendors to family conflicts and the pressure of meeting everyone's expectations. Each challenge tested our relationship, forcing us to tackle things together and rely on each other. Then came the nitty gritty details, dress fittings, flower choices, and food tastings. Juggling work, family stuff, and all the wedding prep needed serious time management and dedication. But in the middle of all the chaos, there were some seriously magical moments. Picking our vows, imagining our first dance, and thinking about the lifetime of memories we'd create became the anchors that kept us going. Friends and family too were with us every step of the way. Our wedding day was a whirlwind of emotions, laughter, and heartfelt moments that made it feel like our love story was coming to life LOL. From the early hustle and bustle of getting ready with my bridesmaids to the late night party, every part of the day added another chapter to our story. The morning kicked off with a mix of excitement and a touch of nerves. While getting ready, there was this lighthearted vibe filled with laughter and stories that set a cheerful tone. The air smelled like flowers, 
and there was this sweet anticipation as everything fell into place. The venue, decked out in our favorite colors and personal touches, turned into a visual representation of our journey. The aisle, where I was about to walk into a life together, felt like the symbolic path we were choosing. Our families and friends started gathering, creating a cozy atmosphere of familiarity and love. The ceremony itself was a roller coaster of emotions. Saying our vows and swapping rings felt like time standing still. The carefully chosen words were laced with sincerity, creating a special space where our commitment unfolded. The love and support from our folks and friends wrapped us in a comforting blanket. Moving on to the party was seamless. The reception hall buzzed with music, laughter, and the sound of toasting glasses. Our first dance as a married couple and the heartfelt speeches added depth to the day. The food, made with love, wasn't just a treat for our taste buds, but for our hearts too. In the midst of the celebration, we stole a few quiet moments to soak it all in. The journey that led us here, the hurdles we faced, and the amazing people around us became part of the story. The dance floor turned into our personal stage, surrounded by the smiling faces of those who had been there through it all. As the night unfolded, you could feel a sense of accomplishment and the start of something new. The shared laughs, happy tears, and tight hugs became the stitches weaving into the fabric of our wedding day. It was a big love party, a sum up of the moments that shaped our journey and the promise of many more memories ahead. Our honeymoon felt like stepping into a dream after all the wedding craziness. We picked a chill spot, a tropical island with beaches and greenery, for some R&R &R and adventure as a newlywed duo. Getting there was like a buzz of excitement. Boarding the plane, we were itching to escape to this secret paradise we'd chosen. Arriving at the resort was like hitting the jackpot. The smell of flowers and the sound of waves made it feel like a luxury cocoon. Our room had this amazing view of the blue waters, the perfect backdrop for our private retreat. Days on the island were a mix of lazy vibes and exploration. Mornings meant chilling on the beach, sipping cocktails, and enjoying the freedom of having no plans. Afternoons were for snorkeling, finding cool spots, and soaking up the local vibes. Evenings were all about us, romantic dinners under the stars, tasting the island's flavors. Laughing together, stealing glances, and quiet moments under the moon became memories we'll carry forever. One standout was a sunset cruise. The sky turned into a crazy mix of colors as the sun set, and sailing along the coast hand in hand felt like our own little magic moment. Our honeymoon was also a time to talk and connect. Long walks on the beach turned into heart-to-heart -heart chats, where we spilled dreams, plans, and all that jazz. With no daily grind, we soaked up each other's company without distractions. As the days rolled on, the locals, super friendly, added a realness to our trip. Their stories shared during tours and market visits gave us a taste of the place and its people. Leaving the island meant saying bye to our honeymoon, but the memories stuck like glue. After our dreamy honeymoon, reality kicked in, and we found ourselves back home, settling into the routine of married life, with Philip earning well, I decided to embrace the role of a stay-at-home mom. After a few years of being married, about three to be exact, my good friend Angela dropped the bombshell. She said yes to her boyfriend's proposal. The excitement radiated from her as she happily spilled the beans about their wedding plans. Angela, who had been a rock during my own wedding, threw the bridesmaid invite my way for her big day. Remembering all the times Angela had been there for me, I gladly jumped at the chance to return the favor and stand by her side. Playing the role of a bridesmaid turned out to be a heartfelt adventure. From tackling wedding prep to hitting up dress fittings and organizing the bachelorette bash, each task was loaded with shared memories and the bond we'd built over the years. However, the day it all went wrong was the bachelorette party. Angela was always the wild and lively one in our group, injecting fun and good vibes whenever we hung out. So, when it came to planning her bachelorette party, it was no surprise that she suggested hitting up a club for a wild night out. I was totally on board for Angela's bachelorette idea, especially since tying the knot with Philip meant my clubbing days took a back seat. I love my hubby, but he's more on the steady and reliable side, not exactly the party animal. So, the thought of hitting the club again had me genuinely pumped. I made a deal with myself to keep things easy, not go overboard on drinks, just soak in the vibes. 
Of course, I didn't spill the beans to Philip about the club part. I figured if I did, he'd probably veto the whole plan. Since I was all in for a night out, I just told him the girls and I were organizing a classic girls' night for Angela's bachelorette. He didn't pry much, which was just what I needed for my little plan. Once we hit the club, my grand plan of not drinking much quickly went out the window. I tried to keep it on the low, soaking up the good times with my friends. Being back in the club scene after a while felt like a blast, even though there were some new things I wasn't used to. But you know how it goes. A few minutes in, my friends started pushing me to have more drinks. They argued it was a joyous occasion and, well, I wanted to join in the fun while staying somewhat sober to avoid any silly moves. So against my initial plan, I gave in and started knocking back a few more drinks. You know how it usually unfolds. One drink led to another and soon enough, I was on a roll. Feeling all the good vibes, I kept sipping and, well, I went a bit overboard. Next thing you know, I found myself doing some pretty silly stuff. At this point, my friends and I were pretty deep into the whole drunk scene, daring each other to pull off ridiculous stunts. It was like, hey, go peck that guy, or why not ask that dude for his number? It was one of those nights. At that point, my friends tossed in another dare go over to some random guy and dance with him. I figured, why not? It seemed harmless enough, just a bit of dancing. Well, turns out it wasn't as harmless as I thought. Things took a turn, and I ended up grinding on this guy, and it only got worse. My friends cheered me on while I full-on groped, kissed, twerked, and grinded on a random guy. I kept at it for a while, grinding and dancing with different guys throughout the night until I got bored and moved on to another. The next morning, I woke up with the craziest headache. My head was pounding. Despite the hangover, the memories of the previous night hit me and I felt horrified. The thought of telling Philip crossed my mind, but then I hesitated. I had already fibbed about the whole girl's night thing and besides, I didn't really cross any major lines. I never went all the way with the guy, so I figured it wasn't worth spilling the beans. So it turned out I wasn't the only one having second thoughts. The girls and I made a pact. What happens at the club stays at the club. We promised not to spill the beans to anyone else, and that was that. Fast forward to Angela's wedding, and it was an absolute dream. The whole event was breathtaking, and we had a blast. The food was on point, the vibe was fantastic. In a nutshell, it was a beautiful celebration. A few weeks post Angela's wedding, life was chugging along as usual. The girls and I weren't catching up as often due to our busy schedules, but we had an outing planned for next week, so that was something to look forward to. I was at home when Philip walked in, a bit irked and distant. I figured maybe someone at the grocery store had rubbed him the wrong way, so I didn't think much of it. As the days went by with Philip keeping up the standoffish attitude, it started to bother me more. His cold demeanor persisted for about three days, one-word answers, avoiding eye contact, and I couldn't help but wonder what I might have done to trigger this. Eventually, I decided it was time to confront him and get to the bottom of it. Oh. When I mustered the courage to ask Philip if I had done something to upset him, he flat out denied it. It was pretty clear he was lying given his icy behavior. I pressed him again, and all he did was laugh it off. Frustration building, I told him to cut the nonsense and just spill it. That's when he dropped the bomb. He couldn't understand how he was supposed to smile at me when everyone in town was labeling me as a hoe. Our town was one of those small, tight-knit communities where everyone knows everyone. Gossip spreads like wildfire in such places. Hearing Philip mention that people in town were calling me names was genuinely shocking. I racked my brain, trying to think of anything that might have caused such rumors. But apart from the club incident, nothing else came to mind. The puzzling part was figuring out how details from the club, which was a bit of a distance away, had made their way into the ears of folks in our town. Small towns have their drawbacks, and the speed at which rumors travel is definitely one of them. Philip didn't need to ask if the rumors in town were true. The shock on my face pretty much gave away my guilt. I attempted to explain that I hadn't done anything wrong, and even asked him what exactly people were saying. Philip was not just angry, but also more irritated than ever. He told me people in town were calling me names because a video of me at the strip club with the girls had been leaked and no one knew which girl was behind it. I was on the brink of tears. I knew I had made a colossal mistake. It hit me that Philip might never forgive me. Not only had I lied about what the girls and I were up to that night, but I had also cheated on him. 
I tried desperately to defend myself, emphasizing that I hadn't slept with the guy and hadn't gone all the way. But Philip wasn't having it. He insisted that just grinding on the guy was enough to qualify as cheating. I pleaded with him, explaining that I was drunk and wouldn't have done something like that if I had been sober. Philip dropped the pretense of being okay. I realized that the cold treatment over the past three days was his way of waiting for me to ask so he could unleash his frustration. He didn't hold back. He demanded that I leave the house and he declared that we were heading for a divorce. His words were harsh, branding me as a loose woman, and he affirmed that the people in town were right in their judgment. In the midst of tears, I found myself offering apologies repeatedly, feeling utterly helpless with no words to defend myself. It became clear that Philip wasn't open to listening, so I gathered my belongings and left. Sobbing, I ended up going back to my parents' house, seeking solace and a temporary place to stay. The disappointment from my parents was palpable, and it wasn't any different when Philip's parents got wind of the situation. Regret weighed heavily on me, and it must have been evident because my parents took it upon themselves to reach out to Philip. Despite his lingering anger, they attempted to talk to him. Philip, initially resistant, eventually agreed to listen after a few days when he had calmed down a bit. Despite my parents' efforts, Philip expressed that forgiveness was impossible. He conveyed to my parents his decision to seek a divorce, stating that the embarrassment and shame he experienced from watching a video of his wife with another man would be indelibly etched in his mind, and that he would never forget it. Even when my parents suggested couples therapy, Philip firmly asserted that it wouldn't be able to mend the damage, and he had no intention of reconciling. Even though I was bawling my eyes out and practically on my knees begging, Philip wasn't having any of it. He stuck to his decision, telling me it was over between us. It's kind of messed up, but finding out I'm not the only one facing backlash oddly gives me a bit of comfort. Angela, who just got married, is dealing with her leaked video too. It's like a domino effect, messing with relationships left and right, some on the verge of breakups, others hitting up couples therapy, and some flat out heading for divorce. Philip didn't hold back. He emptied our joint account, taking almost everything since he was the sole provider and I was a stay-at-home mom. He left me with very little, and now I'm just waiting for the divorce papers he promised to send over. Dealing with Philip's parents has been tough. They reached out and their disappointment is palpable. The gossips in this town have been relentless, with snide comments coming at me from all directions. Once the divorce is officially done, I'm seriously considering leaving this place for a fresh start. Sharing my story is a way to find some peace of mind amidst the chaos. If someone out there is contemplating cheating, I hope they stumble upon this and make the wise decision to steer clear of that path. Thank you for listening.